Donna might have more followers, but I have a nicer cup. My fridge just turned on. Can you hear that? There's a couple different reasons you might have clicked on this video. It could be that you just, you follow me and, and you saw I had a new video and you thought, hey, I'll be nice. I'll follow along and watch. So if that's the case, thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, but more likely it's because you typed into YouTube something along the lines of like how to become a full-time videographer and photographer or one year in, how do I make this work? Or I don't know what I'm doing and I need help. Or maybe you're a photographer and, and you're doing really well and you have like a great business and things are going well and you just want to see some other perspectives. I don't know. Regardless, there's definitely some stuff that I've discovered over this past while that I think I could share and hopefully would help people uh, avoid some of the pitfalls that I got myself into and, and can help you to become more successful more quickly in becoming a full-time photographer and videographer. What's up? My name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. Uh, I started this channel a few months ago because I just wanted to start interacting with some people in this space. I wanted to see what it was like to have a kind of full-time production schedule on YouTube and, and see if I could make a go of it. So I would love it if you'd follow along, you know, hit the subscribe button, all that stuff that we tell you to do. It does help, I think. And, uh, and I look forward to kind of bringing you along on my journey. And, and that's what we're doing here today. We're talking about not just my journey, but the journey of starting photography and videography as a career. It's scary. Yeah, it's a confusing thing to do. It has tons of ups and downs. And I just really think that there's a few best practices that I've seen that either I abandoned and didn't do and wish I did, or that I did well and I think worked out for me. Now, to be very clear, I am not fully cooked. I am not like a minted photographer. I haven't had my stuff published everywhere. I haven't, I'm, I'm not like at the top of the mountain talking down to you, telling you like, this is the way. What I'm saying is that after being in this full time for about a year and a half now, I have a pretty good sense of at least what I did well and what I didn't do well. And I've just been thinking a lot about like, what would I do if I were to start again? If I were to hit the reset button, knowing what I know based on this past year and a half. So I'm not gonna look at this as an entire year. I'm actually gonna break it down a little bit. We're gonna look at the first three months the second three months, and then the last half of the year and, and what I would do and how I would approach things. Firstly, I don't think you should be focusing on making a bunch of money in this first few months. Definitely don't quit your day job. I would say you should work on including photography and videography into your life as much as possible, as much as time provides so that you can start to build out a portfolio and you can get better at what you do. During this time, I would definitely try and shoot anything and everything. I would look into your area where you live and see what the market is like, see like what people are paying for. You know, is there, I live in a region where there's like tons of wedding venues. So there's a lot of wedding photographers here and there's a lot of money going towards weddings. You might live in an area where there's just tons of building going on. So there's like real estate and there's commercial work in that side. You might be able to get portrait work. You might be able to get like work shooting for restaurants or whatever. Figure out what the market is like in your area. And then what I would do is just basically try all those things out. Go to a place like a restaurant. Maybe you know someone who works there, a bartender or something, and just say, hey, I'm just trying to get into photography kind of more full time. And I would love it if I could just do a free shoot for you guys. I can snap some photos of like your cocktails or of your dishes or what have you. They get the images for free. You get a chance to see like, hey, do I like doing product photography? Do I like doing food photography? Is this my style? And if you hate it, then you know, and you didn't have to um, invest a bunch of time and money into doing that. And you also didn't book a bunch of clients for something and you have to like slog through a bunch of work that you don't like doing. I know for me, I was doing like real estate. I did food photography. I did like commercial stuff. I did events, portraits, product like anything that you could photograph that people wanted. I feel like I did in the first like three to six months. And I think that was actually really smart because it helped me to decide like, oh, I absolutely don't want to do this stuff, but I really like doing this stuff. The next thing I would do, and this is a really uncomfortable thing for a lot of people, but I would start telling everyone you know that you're trying to become a full-time photographer. It might feel embarrassing. It might feel weird to be like telling people that you have this desire to do this thing that people don't really get. Like, most people think that you can't do it full time or that you won't make any money or whatever. And it's embarrassing if you don't have like a big portfolio. If people don't really know you as the photographer. I went through this, right? I owned a couple of cafes and nobody thought of me as like the photography guy. So I've literally had to spend this last year and a half like changing people's minds about who I am. And it took me, I would say at least 
six or eight months to feel at all comfortable when somebody would ask what I do to say, I'm a photographer. It felt like stolen valor because I wasn't getting paid to do photography full time. So I would say something like, oh, like, yeah, I work like, cause I was working at a running store part time or whatever. I would be like, oh, like I, I, I shoot photos, but I also like, I work at a running store and I do some consulting in the coffee. Like I would say a whole bunch of different shit. Uh, but the reality is in my heart, I was like, well, I want to be a photographer and I think I can do it. So I think maybe I should just tell people like what I want to aspire to. And so that's what I would do. I'd start saying to people like, yeah, like I'm, you know, I'm a photographer. I'm not quite full time, but that, that's what I'm working towards. The other thing I would say is feel comfortable shooting for free. It is okay to take free work. Don't listen to what everyone on YouTube says about like, no one will ever value you if you shoot for free. That's not true. I have a story about this and it took place literally today. This isn't like when a comedian's like, oh, I, walked, I was walking down the street today. No, this literally happened today. I just got off the phone with a guy named Kirk. Kirk owns a building center and he wants to put together like a digital commercial. He's into photography and videography himself. He likes good quality stuff. He knows me, he knows my work, and he trusts that I could put together something great for him. I would say that one of the big reasons Kirk actually came to me is because when I very, very first started deciding like a year and a half ago that I'm gonna start charging for work, I went to Kirk because he owned not only this building center, but he owns this like supply company where they sell like these beautiful like hardwood flooring, all this cool stuff. They were doing a Christmas market and I said like, hey, do you want me to come shoot the Christmas market? Didn't charge him, didn't ask for anything. I just said, I'll come by, I'll snap a bunch of photos. You can have them for your socials, that's great. I did something for free and now, yeah, it took a while, but a year and a half later, he's coming to me and he's saying like, hey, I've got this cool project, do you wanna take it? The one thing I'll say about free work is if you're offering free work, it should be under purview of you. Like you decide the terms. You know, if you're giving something for free, you also have control over what you're giving. So just keep that in mind. All right, we're a few months in. What are we doing from month three to six? Months three to six is where I would start to narrow your focus a little bit. So for me, I realized that like, I'm not gonna be the best real estate photographer because the like turn and burn sort of aspect of it is just not for me. Going out and shooting like seven houses in one day and getting those photos back in like less than 24 hours is just not, what I'm about. You can make good money doing it, but it just, it didn't work for me. I took the time to figure out what I did and didn't want to do. And then I narrowed my focus. You know, my, when I first made my website, I had like five different categories of stuff that I shot and it was super confusing because you'd look at it and you'd be like, okay, so they do portrait, they do architecture, they do commercial shoots. They got some like weird street stuff in here. And that that's all, I'm not saying you shouldn't showcase that stuff in some way, but I do think it's important to kind of think about what you want to shoot and start to narrow your focus a little bit. Getting paid for something doesn't mean it's what you want to get paid for forever. And the more you show certain types of work, the more people will come to you for it. At this point, you're a few months in, hopefully you've built up a bit of a portfolio of images or videos or both. I think it's time to start kind of amping up that networking phase. Like I know networking is not super fun, but it's important. We know it's important. So just like get comfortable with it. It's not networking in the way that like a lot of us think of it, super businessy and salesy. Like you're an artist, you're doing something super cool. You're providing something awesome. And all you're doing is getting yourself out there to tell people about it. You're showing your work and you want your work to speak for itself and to speak for you and to get you the jobs. But like you have to get that work in front of people and then people have to interact with you to know that you're not a fucking psychopath and that you're a good person to hang out with. I think the more we can just ensure that we are putting ourselves forward in an honest and credible way, like the closer we're gonna get to getting that work we want. And so you gotta start doing the networking. Okay, at this point, you've probably more or less just taken whatever jobs come to you. You're saying yes to everything, that's awesome. You're getting paid whatever the budget is, but this is where I would start to think about your day rate a little bit. So let's say at your job that you normally work, you make 25 bucks an hour and that works out to 200 bucks a day. I don't think you should be charging, you know, anywhere less than that for a day work in photography. Like certainly you have to use all your own gear. You have to pay for that gear. You have to travel. You have to take on the responsibility of leading a photo shoot or a video shoot. You have to edit, you have to pay for storage costs. All these things start to add up. So put everything together, come up with a day rate that feels good for you. Maybe it's double what you would make at your normal work, or maybe it's, you know, the same, whatever it feels good to you just figure out a day rate and start sticking to that. So if somebody comes to you and they want you to do something and it's way below your day rate, this is where you can start to say like, you know what, like this is actually my day rate here. Can we meet at this number and try and figure that out and try to start showing people that 
there's value to what you do. And, and I think you will get a little bit more confident in your skill set as well, because you're getting paid well to do the things that you want to do. And, and it's going to come through in your work as well. Okay. So month six to 12, uh, this is where we're just kind of chugging along. We're starting to see some return. Hopefully we're starting to see some positive things. We're starting to understand what we want to do better still shoot everything i would say like take the work you can get keep shooting you're still so early in the phase of of all of this but now you're just starting to get a little bit more work hopefully you're starting to feel a little more confident this is where i would start to think about like fine tuning your skill set a little bit diving deeper into learning about the things you want to shoot and maybe some of the things that you haven't shot yet and, and exploring those but I would also really think at this point about your website. I would think about creating a professional website that has, you know, your pricing, that has your work, that has, you know, frequently asked questions, all the stuff that is going to direct people towards you so people can start finding you online. Doing it too far before this might not be helpful if you don't have enough of a portfolio to show and you only have like 10 pictures you're you're happy with, like maybe you're you're not quite there yet to make this worth it for you, but I would say like the sooner the better get a professional looking solid website and that's definitely going to help. It's going to validate you in the market and it's just an easier way for you to be, you know, seeked, soaked, soaked. It's an easier way for people to search you out. This also might be the point where you can start thinking about your gear list and saying to yourself like, okay, I've gotten by on the stuff I had up to this point. I haven't really spent any money on gear, but I kind of feel like I know what I need now or, or what limitations or I know what I'm getting paid to shoot and I know what I need to do that better. If you're hitting like a roadblock where you're like, this camera just isn't executing for me anymore or I need a better tripod or my audio is trash or whatever, this is the point where you can start to think about that and start to do some research. I still wouldn't buy like the best of the best, but you can start to invest some more money because you're probably feeling a little more confident that this is something you can make work for you. So start thinking about your gear list, start thinking about what you want to spend money on and save up appropriately. Don't go into debt. Uh, that's a stupid mistake. I made it early on and I had to basically sell a whole bunch of gear to kind of get out of it. And it, it, it's a vicious cycle and, and it's still something that I'm trying to work through. But if you can be smart about purchasing gear as you need it and finding good deals and making sure you know when to like buy and sell and all that stuff, you'll, you'll do better. And for me, I'm just I'm pretty good about finding deals with stuff like that. You know, I worked at a camera store for a while, so I got discounts, blah, blah, blah. Don't spend a million dollars on gear. Just spend what you need. And this is the point where I would start to invest. 59 seconds left on this memory card, so we're going to make this quick. That is the first year. That's what I would do if I was kind of going back again and starting to think about how to approach this as a brand new professional photographer. Thank you so much for watching. Hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you think. Like, what did you do in the first year that worked really well? Are you very new to this or was your first year like 10, 15, 20 years ago? What advice do you have? Does this sound right? Does this sound totally ridiculous and wrong? I don't know, but this is what worked for me and what didn't work for me. And I look forward to hearing from you. So thank you so much. Appreciate you. Uh, go out there and make stuff and, and uh, let me see it. Okay, peace.